action. You are not alive. Uh, Alright, good morning. I'm her. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. Do we have anyone? Where you are? Oh, I your know. followers said you were alive. Well, I'm from here. Yep, Alright. Hi Mike. <laughs> <laughs> So guys, I'll be checking my phone over here, so leave us any questions, comments, but first... Hello, Instaworld! Hello, Instaworld! <laughs> so, here we are for our first ever cooking live video. Uh, I'm Phil. And I'm Mystique. And we are Chef Sous Chef. We are. Yeah. Oh, I'm the chef. <laughs> and I'm the Sous Chef. And we're here today for our first ever cooking live after five. And so why we decided with Cooking Live After Five? Well, because we both work full-time jobs. Phil is a Toronto real estate broker and I work in social media and we just wanted to provide easy, quick, quick, obviously, weekday recipes um, and just show you how to truly make it Instagrammable. So if you are hosting or entertaining over the weekend, you know how to do it. That's right. So the goal is that each of these recipes will be under 30 minutes of active time. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. it. So um, before we get into it too much... Um, well, first we should tell you what we're making. I don't uh, think we've told you yet. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> so if any of you happen to know, today is actually National Strawberry Shortcake Day. And so naturally we are going to be making... <laughs> Steph Andrews thinks I'm totally the chef. And I totally agree with that ambition. <laughs> but we're gonna make creme brulee today instead. No, I'm just messing with you. We are gonna make strawberry shortcake, uh, but not just any strawberry shortcake. We're ditching the shortcake and replacing it with a strawberry shortcake cake. Uh, it and is delicious. Will, yeah, it's totally delicious, and we'll tell you why we made the swap out. Right. Uh, but first. So now, before we get into it, we're gonna cheers with a little bit of wine. Cheers. Because if we have learned anything from Lauren from This Renegade Love is wine is a must on an Instagram live. So cheers, Lauren. <laughs> cheers. Um, yeah, and the other great thing, I mean, for us, this is a date night. We love to cook in the kitchen together, get a chance to bond, catch up on the day, all of that stuff. Totally. So now we're going to get into it. Um, so before you start, we'll just get into our ingredients. So of course we have some beautiful, fresh, local Ontario strawberries. They're clean and prepped and ready to go. Uh, we have some mascarpone cream and some whipping cream. This is going to make the topping along with some maple syrup and we have some Cointreau. Whipping cream. Sorry guys, I'm super slow. <laughs> Apparently. Some maple syrup. Also how cute is our maple? Jar. We got it in Montreal last year and I'm totally obsessed with it. Yeah. Uh, we've also got some Cointreau, as Phil said. And if you don't want to use Cointreau, you can use Grand Marnier. If you're not feeling the booze, then just swap out orange juice. We haven't tried it with orange juice, but I mean, there should be no reason why it wouldn't work. Um, got? And then for the cake, we have some flour, baking powder, sugar, oh, baking powder, sugar butter, 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 eggs, and... and yeah, there's a lot of butter. It is dessert after all. Why oh, skimp on that? Yeah. Uh, and then there's going to be some additional whipping cream in the cake as well. So we're going to get into it. Uh, I have about two cups of strawberries. I've already started on the prep a little bit. Um, these guys aren't super, super ripe. I think imagine they were picked just today or yesterday. I got them from a local farmer's market. Uh, so I'm just going to pick off the green parts. If they are super ripe and you don't feel like doing that, then you can just cut off the top. I like to do this first. That way there's not a ton of waste with the strawberries. And guys, we shared our strawberry shortcake cake with orange liqueur and mascarpone cream on the blog last week. Uh, so if you want to check out that recipe or just follow along while we're cooking, feel free to. Uh, you can find that on the blog. That's right. Yeah. So I have all these off, so we're just gonna cut off a tiny bit off the top. You don't want too much waste. Uh, you don't have to cut it off, but I find that the, uh, the little stub of the stem can be a little chewy, so I like to just take that off. And we're just gonna cut them in half lengthwise. Be very careful. Make sure to use a sharp, sharp knife. I have a paring knife here. You want the knife to be super sharp, otherwise you have a greater risk of cutting yourself. You want it to just glide through these berries. 
So, we're just I also don't do know if couple. you guys know the reason why we were even called Chef Sous Chef. Um, so while we were dating, cooking was always something that we did together, and it allows allowed us to get in the kitchen and really spend quality time together. Um, and while I'm not allowed to use knives, I'll tell you about that later. Um, I was always the one that was stirring or helping out in the kitchen, um, and so I became the honorary sous chef of our kitchen. That's right, it was even in our wedding vows. It was. <laughs> and then, for some of you who don't even know, um, it was three days after we got married that we decided to start Chef Sous Chef because wedding withdrawal is a real thing and I really missed it. Um, so while I was always the sous chef, Phil became the honorary chef and Chef Sous Chef was born. That's right. So we have the berries cut here. I'm gonna get Mystique to put in about a tablespoon of maple syrup as well as the orange quattro. While she's doing that, I'm just gonna get our mixer ready. And now... And guys, feel free to eyeball this. I, well, we both particularly love maple syrup. I'll stop. <laughs> um, so add more, add a little less, but you're definitely gonna to wanna to add some more. And same with the orange quattro. If you like it a little boozier, definitely feel free to put a little extra in. It's not gonna hurt anyone. No. Um, yeah, we enjoy it. So Mystique's gonna give that a mix. I'm gonna grab the ingredients for the cream. And I learned this the other day. Well, Phil taught me this a long time ago that when strawberries are sitting in the fridge with a little bit of sugar or some maple syrup, they macerate, is that the word? Yeah, that's right. This means it's, a, it's uh, marinating in liquid. It allows the juices to come out uh, and they just get super sweet and delicious. Honestly, that was my favorite dessert, just mm -hmm. like a tiny bit of maple syrup on top of strawberries. Let it sit for like 20 minutes or so. And uh, yeah, it's delicious. And guys, see the this of smells those. ridiculously good. And I know it's kind of strange that we're putting an orange citrus with the strawberries because Lemon and strawberries go really well together, but we actually rely heavily on our food Bible, which is kind of like a cooking thesaurus that allows you to pair ingredients really well together. Um, so our food Bible told us that orange and strawberries go very well together, so we decided to add some Grand Marnier. And, and I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. Yeah, if you don't mind putting it in the fridge. So while she's doing that, I have a half cup of whipping cream here. Just gonna throw this in the stand mixer. Uh, as far as equipment, we are using a stand mixer. You don't have to use a stand mixer. You can definitely use um, electric beaters. If you're looking for a serious workout, you can use a balloon whisk as well. I probably wouldn't recommend that because it would take a while and probably add about 10 minutes on to the recipe. But again, if you want the workout, go for it. So I'm gonna start by whipping this whipped cream for about 30, 45 seconds. No, kind of sugar we using? We will not be using that yet, but that is cane sugar. Cane sugar. So Steph Andrews is asking us if we are using refined sugar, so we are using some maple syrup and some cane sugar. Which is like, it's on the border. I mean, we, if, if you, you can definitely replace sugar with maple syrup. We haven't tested it with this recipe, but we did swap out for cane sugar instead. And it's dessert, Steph Andrews, little at all. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna beat this until it's like soft peaks, uh, which we're pretty much there now. It's been about 20 to 30 seconds. And I apologize, we are in a really small kitchen, so we have set up a table here, which does shake a lot. If our table's rocking, don't come a knocking. Yeah. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but when I think about strawberry shortcake, there are two things that I think about. The first one is strawberry shortcake, the TV character who has kind of a strawberry as a bonnet. And the second one I think about is that skipping game that we all played as kids called strawberry shortcake. Yeah, I don't think so. You played it. <laughs> you guys know how it goes. Strawberry shortcake, huckleberry pie, who will be your lucky guy? And then you list off the alphabet and whatever letter you stop on with skipping, that is the letter of your lucky guy. And yours was always P, right? It was always P. Of course it was. Uh, but I know you guys played it. If you have played that game, give me a little heart action because, first of all, I know everybody has played that. I don't know. Hearts? <laughs> I don't see any hearts. I feel like we're kind of delayed. We're a little delayed here, but. We may not be. Uh, <laughs> okay, so continuing on, the whipped cream is just soft peaks. I'm just gonna throw in the mascarpone cream, 
that's in there. I have a half cup of that. And then we're going to eyeball about a tablespoon of maple syrup. I'll pull that over one second. So it's about a tablespoon or so. And I'm going to free pour the Cointreau. Again, this is just the topping. So you don't have to be too serious with it. If it's a little over, a little less, it won't really matter or affect the taste too, too much. So we're going to continue whipping this. Another 10, whoops, we got a little spillage, that's okay. Splatter action. All uh, right, so probably about 20 seconds or so. And guys, the best part about being a sous chef is you get to carry around a napkin in your back pocket. And I'm super type A, I need everything super clean. Um, so it's going Okay, and that is done. So basically, the reason we're doing the mascarpone in here is, uh, well, there's two reasons. Um, one for the flavor, it gives it a nice fresh flavor. The other one is, this is a great recipe to pack and go. If you use the mascarpone cream, it allows it to hold up better if you are taking it to a picnic or something like that. Do you yeah. mind grabbing that small bowl there? This one? That's the one. So this is the topping, and it's pretty much the same as a whipped cream topping. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, it's very similar in texture, but it is just going to be a little richer. So we're just going to throw that into a bowl, scrape everything out. You don't have to be too picky with it because we are just going to be whipping some more cream in here anyways. So I'm going to see, go ahead and to throw that into the fridge again. And we are going to whip some more cream. So another half cup of cream. Now, one thing with cream, when you guys go to the grocery store, you'll find that most major brands have whipped cream. You'll look on the ingredient label, it'll probably have like 10, 15 ingredients in it. There is literally zero reason for that. The reason why they do that is just to make it whip a little bit better and to allow it to have a longer shelf life. Whipped cream should only have one ingredient in it, and that ingredient is cream. cream. So if you see that, just be careful and mindful because you don't need all that extra stuff. If you want to use it, whatever, that's all good. But and so this is the whipped cream that's going into the yeah, this topping will, or into the cake? No, this will be going into the cake. So this one we're going to whip until stiff peaks form. Am I splattering it? No, table's shaking. Table is shaking. <laughs> we'll leave that comment and we already did. Uh, so this we're going to do for about 30 seconds. Well, this is doing, you can maybe sit sure. if you want. So guys, Phil showed me this technique uh, a few weeks ago. So you take parchment paper, you fold it in half, you give it a little bit of a rounded edge. Oh, it's really, really good. I feel like if I sit, it's going to be a good line. All right, so let's... Where does it sit? It's so old. It needs and a sit. This is a sit. So what you're going to do, maybe I should wait. Yeah, that's, that's okay. You can wait. Alright, so, so that's one of the reasons that we decided to go with a strawberry shortcake cake and skipping the actual shortcake was because sometimes when you're cooking shortcake they can become a little dry, um, so it is a bit more temperamental, you have to pay a bit more attention to it. So going with a traditional loaf cake or something that's just a little bit easier to make um, allows you to just slice up a few pieces. If you are having people over, you get the entire loaf, you cut up some pieces, and I'll show you how to style that later. But it's a lot easier to make than shortcake, a lot less finicky, um, especially for a weeknight dish. It's, save the shortcake for the weekend. Yeah, that's right. All right, so you can see we have some stiff peaks here. Let's get the uh, another small bowl, another small actually, bowl. which of course I do not grab. Give me one second. Small bowl. Can I start the stove process? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay, so you're gonna take your dry ingredients. All this flour. Oh, flour. So We've got some baking powder. And there's already a little salt in What's there. That? Oh, and there's a little bit of salt in there. Okay, so what you're gonna do is like shake it, tap it. Shake, 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 shake it. And what you're doing is you're also adding a lot more air to the flour. You're giving it, you're making it a lot less refined, making a lot less. Not refined. Fine. That's oh. not the right word. That's but fine. what tends to happen with flour? It can compact, so it's basically it. just loosening. Yeah, it's just loosening it up, guys. taking the little bumps out of it, um, and it's just going to make for a smoother cake overall. 
So I am going to grab the butter. Should I press this down? Oh, no. I kind of need it to. Let's keep it on the paper, though. Sorry. That's not good. And you'll see there's a lot of lumps in here, guys. Yeah, so that you can just use your fingers to get through. There's usually a little leftover salt or whatever. Just push it through and then, uh, yeah. That's good to go. Amazing. All right, so now we're back to the butter. So I have a half cup of butter here, which is about 150 grams or so. You want it at room temperature. Now, if you don't have time to let it go to room temperature, just cut it into cubes and it will pretty much get to room temperature in like half or a quarter of the time. Uh, we cubed it, let it sit out for about 10 minutes and it will be good to go. So we're gonna put that in. And she goes. And next, Guys. we yes. are going to add some sugar. We have about three quarter cups of the cane sugar here. That just goes straight in. And set that aside. I'm just going to switch out to our other beater. Now, you will be tempted to lick this. This is just straight cream, so don't do it. You will be disappointed. I can guarantee oh, yeah. it. Yeah, you would. Do you want to try it? Did I? So, <laughs> <laughs> so get rid of that guy. And we're going to switch out to the batter beater. Okay, so like Sarah is loving this bowl. Hi, Sarah. Um, I'm obsessed with that bowl, too. It comes in a set of three. It's from West Elm, and it's beautiful. It's actually CB2. It's actually CB2. We like um, West Elm, too, though. Like it's all good. Too. We've got a lot of West Elm things. All right, so I'm beating the butter and the sugar together. This is gonna take about a minute or so. Basically, what we're looking for is to get lots of air in there. Uh, the color is gonna get like a pale yellow and the sugar almost gets to a point of being resolved. And we'll show you guys this when it finishes. Yeah, so we're... I think right now we drink! <laughs> That's right. You got really excited there. The machine's really loud. Yeah, I know. The spinner. Alright. So we probably mix it. She's drunk already. Well, I'm not. Excuse her. I'm not. She's not. I'm She's not. not. <laughs> No. I just want to get to my apartments. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't tend to have a lot to do in the kitchen, guys. I just, I help out. Have a glass of wine. I have a glass of wine because, I mean, and for all of you sous chefs out there, wine comes with the job. So you're lucky if you're a sous chef in the kitchen. That's right. Now, do you mind actually cracking uh, those two eggs? I'll trust you to crack some eggs. I think you can handle that. Come on. You gotta yeah, earn those sous chef stripes. Right. Like crack on the table or just like on the bowl? Do it on the table, that way you don't get all the shells into the bowl. Okay. Now, right. because I've already cracked it. Okay, so the one's going in. It's coming, guys. All right, no shells. All right, no, no shells. shells. Success. One of two, just one? No, two, but we do one at a time. Leave that guy? I'm yeah, that's okay. It. It's still running the same for whatever. Oh. That works. All right, so we have that going. I don't get to crack the eggs very often, guys, because like, <laughs> When I make eggs in the morning, there's usually shells in them and they're pretty gross. That's not true. You make great eggs. All right, let's do the second one there. Good. Oh, this one's looking shelly. Okay. Let's just put it in. Oh, how do you even do this? Well, you put it in the bowl first normally, but oh, that's okay. No. We'll just do it this way. You know what? There was no shells in there. Very impressed. Two for two, guys. <laughs> All right, so we're going to let this go for like another 30 seconds or so. Basically what we're looking for here is for it to get like a silky, smooth color. It becomes really shiny. Um, it doesn't take too long. You do want it at, high, uh, at a high speed for this part. We are almost there. And I can finally do something with my dry ingredients. <laughs> That's right. Cool. So guys, what are your some, what are your, what are your some? What are some of your favorite things to do with strawberries? Have you made anything yet? You get them from the market? Um, tell us. We want to know. Yeah, if we you do guys have know. any questions, tell us. I'm, I'm on. <laughs> I'm following the live. All right. So we are almost there. We'll give it another 10, 15 seconds. We are shaking here. I'm going to hold the table down. I know on Instagram it looks like we have this massive kitchen and all that. You'd actually be surprised we have about three feet of counter space. We bought this little uh, fake barnacle counter. We put some legs on it. Not best for cooking or using the mixer on, but uh, it sure shows well in photos. Yeah, it does. <laughs> 
All right, so we're done here. So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like. Oh, it looks good. Yeah, it does look good. It's super yellow. Tempted Do you want to, to eat it. Off? No, it's okay. Can I show that? Yeah, sure. Oh. Here we go. Watch the drip. There's so you a can drip. see that it's like silky smooth. Very I would say curated. it's like it's the consistency of I don't know what the consistency is. It's like a thick batter, I guess, at this point. And we're gonna make it an even thicker batter. All right, so we're gonna put this back on, put it on low. I'm gonna get you to okay. put the flour in here. No, it's... So the tip with the parchment paper and why you fold it is because it makes it easier to kind of comb it out. I know when we typically do this in a bowl, it's really hard for me to like pour a bowl in here. More of the flour um, you see on top of the counter yeah. versus in the bowl, and that's... And be very careful with this. So you're gonna tent it very carefully because there are times that it goes the other way. Tilt it slowly into the mixer, please work. Just like push it around. You grab that back one over there. I can't, I don't have the third arm. <laughs> All right, I'll do there that. You there you go. There you go. Teamwork. It's all about the teamwork in the kitchen, right? Oh, and you can just that. Yeah, we'll go to that. All right, so we're on, uh, oh, just turning up the heat pressure. here until it's just mixed. Doesn't take long. We are there. I'm just going to scrape this off, get the flour in there, and just scrape the sides of the bowl. Put there. Oh, we have a little jersey in the background. You guys can even hear that. Yeah, you probably can't hear it. We do have a music going. All right. My arms are better than mine, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, we are mixed now. And that part is done. See, that's not too hard. We're like, what, 10, 15 minutes in? Are we? We're 20 minutes in. Minutes in. It's not bad. All right, so we're just going to get this off. It's good. We'll get rid of this beater. And yes, Fran, that is a really great tip with the parchment paper. Learned it a few weeks ago. Super time saving, and you're also not making that much of a mess. I'm a batter licker. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Do you I know that? you have to taste food while you're cooking, but it just. Phil taste. I'm There's more nothing, just like, it better be good at the end. There is nothing better than a buttery batter. Should I even be doing this? Yeah, you can do that. Let's do you, love, do you. All right, so. Okay. That's good. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> of course. We're going to get rid of that, guys. Is this the batter? It's almost the batter. Oh. All right, now we're going to fold the whipped cream in. The reason we're doing this is because it's going to give the cake like a lighter, airy texture. Basically, you're just incorporating air and more cream and mm -hmm. fat into it. It just makes it awesome. So we're going to throw that in there. And now, carefully, we're going to fold this in. So what you do to fold it in, just do like a little X across and then fold X across. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Pull and cut. Yeah, that's right. That's Come right. <laughs> that is right. All right, so we're just going to do that a little bit until it's incorporated. And you are doing it gently because you don't want the whipped cream to collapse too much. And yeah, you still want it to be super light and airy so that when it bakes, you are getting some of those pockets. Yeah, that's right. All right, so this is good. It's not like 100% mixed, but it is um, good to go. And it still has like a good amount of air in it. You can see here. You probably can't tell, but it does. And then we're ready for the oven. So we have a loaf pan here. We have buttered the edges. Yes, a little bit more butter. I'm sorry. Um, and then we just put, it is it's almost the weekend. Almost so the weekend. Um, and basically we just put a strip of parchment paper. This is just going to make it super easy to come out. You don't want it sticking. We've all had a cake disaster. We don't want that. So this is just going to protect it from that. So in this goes, you probably want to have at least like an inch to an inch and a half of space at the top, um, just to make sure it has room to rise. And that's it. Getting all that goodness out of there. Get rid of this guy and we'll just spread it and flatten it out. Carolyn, you should always be baking. Always be baking. We're inspiring Carolyn to bake more. A-B-B. A-B-B. 
Or ABC, I'll be Shepin and Phil's case. Oh, that's right. That's like the Phil Dumpty rule. <laughs> Alright, so oh. you have this in here. This is a little messier than typically what I would do, but this is what you have. Um, we are going to throw this in the oven. We have the oven preheated at 350 degrees. We're going to put this in for 40 minutes. You can check it after 35 check if your it. oven's a little higher power. Basically what you want to do is stick a bamboo stick in. If it comes out clean, then you are good to go. So we're going to put this in. <laughs> Oven heated. Okay. And so, now we just sit here for 40 minutes. Yeah. So let's get talking. Just kidding, don't leave. <laughs> but <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, through the power of television or through the power of our Insta Live and our oven, we present to you, show you drum roll while you get it. Oh, I'm getting it. A fully baked cake. Oh <laughs> there we go. There you go, guys. So that's a fully baked cake. We're not going to keep it here for 30 to 40 minutes while you bake the cake. As much um, as we would like to. As much as we would like to, but we are already 25 minutes in and it's supposed to be a new dish. So when Phil did the parchment paper, it was so it's easier to come out. The butter has helped it come out of its bread loaf, bread pan. We're going to pull that onto the cutting board. Should I pull the parchment out, Phil? Uh, yeah, I'll just pull it off. Let's do. Get this out of here. Whoa. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but this cake is very moist and it almost split in half. Oh. So let's be careful here. Now, this is when I get to become the sous chef. This is my favorite part because I get to learn from Mystique and see how she styles because it's really like nobody else. And I'm very That's fortunate so that, uh, that I have her to help me with this because you have no idea how badly my okay. stuff would look so, like Okay, so I told you guys before that I'm not allowed to use knives. It's because I cut myself a lot and it's pretty dramatic. Um, so Phil does all the cutting for me. I know it's a sous chef's job, but trust me, you don't want to see that. And you don't want to see her when I cut no. myself because she actually cries I for me. Cry. There's no need for me to. Uh, so I'm going to get Phil to cut two one inch pieces of cake and we're just going to pop that down on the plate. Now um, again, sharp knife, serrated knife. This is a delicate cake, so you want to make sure you're using the right tools. And Francis Lago, who is also Phil's sister, wants to know how to make this gluten free. Oh, that is a good question. Well, Fran, if you learned from our lovely mother, <laughs> uh, what she has taught me to do in the past is she would trade out the uh, regular flour for rice flour and then double the eggs. Now, it does make it a little bit more dense and a little heavier. Mind you, this was like probably 30 years ago she was doing that. Technology is advanced. There's tons of gluten-free flours out there. Okay, guys, uh, so when so it comes to that, styling... Just cut me off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> guys, when it comes to styling, uh, I always go with a super white plate. I just love the contrast of food on a white plate. But because we are using strawberries and this is a bit more of a fun feminine dish, I'm also going to do it on a pink plate that is also from CB2. So we'll get our other piece on. So there we go. Guys, you have no idea how moist this is. It's just like, it it's so good. We're okay. going to try until it's done. So Phil grabbed the macerated strawberries from the fridge. And I don't know if you can see some of that liquid pouring off, but it's super juicy in there. So when it comes time to Instagram, let me pull this back I always use my fingers. I know it's a little weird, but it allows you to get a lot more control. You see how that one just totally fell off? I'm gonna get a little closer if you want to see that. It'd be cool. Okay. So pile some strawberries on. You can try it. Grab a few with your hands. Place them upside down so you get a bit of the texture from the outside of the strawberry. You're getting a lot of texture from the inside of the strawberry. Plop that there. Drizzle some down at the bottom of the plate. And what you're trying to do is a very effortless, it kind of fell there, but it didn't actually fall there because I kind of put it there. Never kind ever of fell there. Thing. It never falls there, guys. Okay, so get some strawberries on, get a lot. You always want to eyeball the strawberry to the ratio, I'm gonna put that one back, the ratio of the cake. And I like a lot of strawberries and they're in season. We've got a lot of them, so I'm gonna go for it. Then, 
Oh, I stole all of your napkins like four times. Wipe my hands. Then I'm gonna get a clean spoon. Sorry guys. Okay, so what you're gonna do here with the mascarpone cream, and remember to put that in the fridge. You're just gonna whip that around a little. Just beat it up in the bowl, just get it a little softer. You're literally just gonna like pop that down. Yeah, there it is. The beauty of a dish like this is that it's so effortless and so beautiful that it really does just come together. And I'm gonna toss a few more strawberries on this guy over here. Oops, that guy's a little messy. That's why you use your fingers. You see how all that pile fell over? Use your fingers. Now, how did you become such a great stylist? <laughs> Ask me I'm sorry, but she's just naturally creative. Guys, I went to school for art history. Um, well, first of all, I was always, I like I was always creative. I was yeah, such a creative little child. Sometimes I don't know you have been. Dollop that whipped cream on. That is a serious dessert. I think it looks like dinner. <laughs> it looks a lot bigger. Then what you're going to do is we have a little bit of sea salt. Oh, we do. Thanks. So I'm going to rip off some mint. You can use basil, you can use thyme. So the Food Bible does say that thyme goes best with strawberries. Um, but I love the way mint and strawberries look together, especially with your mascarpone cream. I'm going to put a little bit of that there. And just a touch of salt Tiny just bit. to bring out the flavor. Tiny bit. And That's wipe it. this plate clean because I was Russian. I'm just going to show you guys what this looks like. How good does that look? Guys, the there full 365 coming at you live. <laughs> and it looks like exactly like our blog post photos. Uh, pretty I'm gonna much. show you this one. Actually, you guys can see the difference in the contrast. Do you see why I like the white plate a little better? Makes it a uh, makes it a lot prettier. So guys, give me some hearts if you think this looks good. We All have a lot of amazings. Ashley had us at Mascarpone. <laughs> Sarah's wondering when she's coming over. Sarah, you can come over. Come over, Sarah. Actually, and we're coming over to you. Sarah has a ridiculous pool. Oh, yeah, that's I'm right. for a work from the pool day. Yeah, I'd like that. All right, okay. I think we're going to try it now. Oh, try it. four spoons here. Oh. Here, here we go. Four spoons. There you no. go, Sarah. Sorry. Okay. So you always want to just, I mean, that looks ridiculous. I don't think you I'm need sorry. to tell that them how to eat. Let's just get in here. So ridiculous. Mm. Okay, seriously? Oh, down. The reason we did what we did is because you get like this amazing light buttery flavor. Oh my God, I still you get the how to bite. Come on, get in there. Sorry. It's just taking way too long. <laughs> so you get the butter flavor, but it's not like in your face it's not like super heavy like mm. it's still super light mm. you get the cheese flavor and like the strawberries of and course the strawberries with the orange liqueur is so good it's just giving like a hit i know strawberries are delicious as they are and the cake you just taste the mascarpone in there mascarpone and you know what's really nice i'm sorry last thing i'm going to say you get like a crust from the sugar and it's like insane. So you get like this nice little uh, crispiness to it. It's mm. sort of ridiculous. It was my first time making it this past weekend. I just sort of winged it and it's like one of those times when it just works out perfectly you know. the first time. Oh. Yeah. And Seriously. the mascarpone with the whipped cream is just, it's so light. The whole thing is just so light and airy. All right, I think they got it. We're making them jealous. Sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna stop eating now. Uh, we want to thank you guys for joining us. We had so much fun. Uh, if you want to make the recipe, it is on our blog. Go to chefsuchef.com. I think it's the first recipe on there. It's the first recipe on the blog. Comment guys, on one it. One more thing. Okay. What I love about this recipe is that all of the components stand up by themselves. So really, if you're having company over, you can make everything ahead of time, keep it in the fridge, and then literally plate it like the Instagram expert that you are. I know you are now. Um, and have everything ready to go. All right, that's it. So that's it. thanks for joining us. We'll let you know when we're going to do our next Instagram live, hopefully not too long. And we hope you come back. Please leave comments for us. Let us know what you think. Definitely any, let us know what you think, guys. Yeah, any improvements. We have thick skin. Yeah, comments, yeah. suggestions, compliments, always welcome. Give us a little love. Give us a little everything. I don't thanks, want to say guys. bye to you guys. 
But we're gonna have to. Bye. See ya. I don't, I don't know how to do this. Hey. End. Done. Ah.